So, I think we can begin now. Yep. Right. So, good good morning, everyone. Welcome to our first training session. Today, we will focus on structural VARs. Now, now training will shall take place over three sessions. On session two, we shall cover Bayesian inference and how they apply to to ve structural vector autoregressions. In the third session, we shall discuss regime switching models and the and their applications to SVARs and Bayesian inference. Now, this now uh, the theory to be covered in these sessions should only be an introduction. For more information on the theory, you can you can go to these to the following sources. Now, let's begin with a review of our classical linear regression model. Now, in linear regression, our goal is to minimize the prediction error given by the true value of y, the difference of the true value of the, the dependent variable, and our estimate. The loss function we shall use here is the quadratic loss function. And we have our generalized OLS estimate given as so. Now, as we know from basic econometrics, order these squares becomes the best linear and bias estimator if the Gauss Markov conditions are met. This also implies that our sample at least must take a normal distribution. Now, moving forward, Economic theory requires empirical validation. And economic theory sometimes posits that variables have some sort of structure. Take, for example, GDP. We have consumption, government expenditure, private investment, and net exports. Now, one might wish to perform regressions on each component individually. For example, to, in regressing consumption, we might take, well, we might regress consumption for each for a cross-section data set for each federal state of Germany. Same with the government expenditure and the rest. Now, now, in order to calculate GDP from these estimates, we need to use structural equations modeling. Structural equation models may also arise from what we call omitted variable bias. Now, if we want to estimate the supply and demand curves of a good, we need to derive the following condition where supply equals demand to obtain equilibrium. Now, after performing a few derivations, we may find price as so, then plug it into the demand curve. If we estimate the demand curve using naive OLS, we gain a biased estimate because, because the parameters estimated are affected both by supply and demand elasticities. In order to prevent bias, we use what we call instrumental variables to estimate the, the endogenous variable supply. Now here in this case, the, the variable W sub T becomes our instrumental variable and, and the term U sub T becomes our new error term. Doing so allows us to obtain this new price calculation and we follow it with a new unbiased estimate. As so. Now, what this simply means is we are regressing the endogenous variable as the dependent variable of the instrumental variables. Now, if we take the supply of vegetables, for example, we might use as instrumental variables days below freezing temperature or damage from natural disasters or even agricultural policy which may be stated as a dummy variable. Now, the process of estimating endogenous variables on instrumental var 